Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, once again, thank you everyone for attending. Today's educational webinar is Data Governance, the Start of Something Wonderful, brought to you by Data Source Consulting and EXL Company. As you know, sorry. As you know, we're big believers in educating the data community on what we're passionate about and continuously learning about here at DataSource. Our speaker today is Nancy Kutcher, our Data Governance Competency Director, who I'll introduce in more detail here shortly. But first, let me tell you just a bit about DataSource Consulting and how and why we know about this topic. We are a pure play enterprise data management, modern data architecture, and decision intelligence consulting firm. In 2016, we were acquired by EXL Service as part of their analytics arm. So we're excited to now be able to offer the end-to-end -end solutions from managing enterprise data to providing the deeper business insights. And as far as how we deliver, we divide our services into two categories. We have our strategic work in data governance, of course, vendor tool evaluation, data virtualization, and program establishment. And then we have the implementation arm with the engineers and architects who work with the internal client teams to deliver on the recommendations we make through our strategy work. And this includes architecture and cloud and BI and decision intelligence, data quality, and NDM. So I'll introduce our guest speaker, Nancy Kutcher. Nancy has over 30 years of experience leading enterprise data management practices, both in Fortune 500 and mid-sized companies. And prior to joining DataSource, she was the Vice President of Data Management Solutions at United Health and the VP of Business Intelligence at Square Two Financial. Nancy was also the president of the TDWI Colorado chapter for three years and has published articles in the TDWI Business Intelligence Journal. She also has an active blog on Skyo.com. Nancy joined Data Source in 2015 and she leverages her extensive experience in enterprise data management to develop and refine Data Source's methodologies, internal competencies, and training. Nancy is a respected authority in the business intelligence industry and frequently presents industry at industry events, including DGIQ, Information on Demand, Teradata Health, Teradata Warehousing Association, and the MIT Information Quality Conference. So, you know, this topic of data governance is so relevant to all aspects of enterprise data management. Um, You'll see it go hand in hand with MZM and data quality, and it's also crucial in compliance initiatives for legislations like GDPR and CCPA. So again, thank you all so much for joining today. And I do want to mention that if you have questions during this presentation, you can utilize the questions field at the bottom of your GoToWebinar panel, and we'll address those in the Q&A during the last 10 to 15 minutes. So with that, I will hand it off to Nancy. Great, thank you, Allison. I appreciate the introduction. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'll start off by providing a very high-level definition of data governance that can be used for most data governance programs. It can be defined as the exercise of decision-making and authority for data-related matters, ensuring a proactive approach to managing data in support of your business strategies. A key word here is proactive rather than being reactive. A good data governance program is designed to support business strategies and vision to ensure it continues to be viewed as adding value. Otherwise, it can be con considered superfluous and become a candidate for reduced funding in future years. In the end, optimizing the value of data across the organization is the ultimate goal. Enterprise data management capabilities and initiatives become easier if data governance is in place and leveraged. I'll go through several of these to illustrate how data governance plays a role in so many areas. Without data governance in place, organizations would need to cobble together independent solutions and capabilities that may be redundant and inconsistent across the enterprise, creating silos of work, roles and responsibilities that would be better off addressed at the enterprise level. This is why DEMA has put data governance in the center of the enterprise data management wheel. It's a foundational capability in so many ways. Here are the enterprise data management capabilities that I'll address in this particular presentation. 
each one of these becomes easier to implement and especially easier to manage and monitor with a robust data governance operating model in place. They include metadata management, regulatory compliance, regulations such as GDPR and CCPA have received a lot of attention lately, master data management, data quality management, data lifecycle management, and overall enterprise data management encompassing things like modern data environments and data lakes. First of all, what constitutes a robust data governance operating model? At the top of the list is executive sponsorship. This includes funding, approved resources, ongoing support, and organizational alignment. Data governance doesn't happen by itself and it requires initial and ongoing funding and support. I've seen a lot of organizations commit to funding a data governance initiative only to cut that funding a year or two later. A defined organization is also part of the operating model. This includes the organizational structure supporting data governance, including a data governance office, appropriate data governance councils defined based on what works for your organization, data owners, business and technical data stewards, all with defined roles and responsibilities. The data governance office is a vital component. It can be made up of a data governance lead and a couple of analysts or a much larger team. But there does need to be individuals identified who develop the data governance processes, ensure they're followed, and maintain any tools that support the data governance initiative. Data governance policy and charters are used to define the mission, guiding principles, structure, roles and responsibilities, and also to document expectations for formalized meetings and outputs. Additional policies can then address various aspects of data privacy and data management as applicable. Marketing, communication, and education needs to be developed, implemented, and continuously managed to ensure alignment and shared knowledge of the data governance program and its components. Individuals who are involved in data governance should readily understand what role they are playing and what responsibilities are associated with that role right from the start. Data consumers should also be trained on what information is available to them in order to more readily find the data they need and leverage it appropriately and consistently. And of course, defined success criteria and published metrics enable you to measure progress and success of a data governance program. They provide ongoing visibility to the organization as well. This constitutes an operating model uh, or as some individuals have named it a data governance framework. So let's start with metadata management, one of the capabilities that align well with data governance. There are two major areas of metadata where data governance can really help to drive progress. Business metadata, which refers to the data about data that the business really needs in order to understand and leverage information across the organization. Things like a business glossary of business term definitions. The business glossary can be enhanced to include relationships to data governance roles so that appropriate accountability is identified. The technical metadata is supportive in nature, but is also key to several focus areas we'll discuss, including regulatory compliance. For example, having documented lineage can be extremely important to an organization's ability to comply with privacy regulations. Data governance can ensure the involvement of people across business and technology to create and more importantly, maintain consistent metadata. A data governance office can ensure that business focused metadata is developed and agreed upon as a way of getting the business engaged. From there, domain owners and data stewards can leverage tools and templates to create and maintain business definitions business rules, and any other information needed for business consumption. Most data governance tools include workflows that enable you to design alerts, reviews, 
approvals and certifications of metadata content to ensure that it's maintained appropriately. Technical metadata, including technical aspects of an organization's data, as well as data lineage, can then be linked to the business metadata. A data governance office can facilitate across the enterprise to develop these processes and workflows and ensure they're adhered to over time. They can develop processes to incorporate the development of metadata in development life cycles and ensure that these processes are followed. In addition, visible data governance metrics can help to ensure that people continue to pay attention. Ideally, domain owners and data stewards get involved in development, and they get involved in development projects so that they're able to ensure that appropriate metadata is collected and documented right from the start. A process flow to develop content and update the business glossary is an example of something that a data governance office can, can create and provide. It can contain information on roles in the form of swim lanes. In this example, data consumers and producers, business data stewards, the data governance committee, and a data governance council are all involved in this process. Tasks decisions, approval points, and tools, all can be identified. These types of process flows can then readily be converted into a workflow in a data governance tool, thus getting all parties aligned and alerted at the right times. One of the pain points I hear most frequently from business users across organizations when it comes to metadata is, I just want to know what data is available, where it's located, and what it means. Business and technical metadata are meant to answer these questions. The key is to design data governance people, processes, and technologies to create and to maintain these on an ongoing basis. Regulatory compliance has become a huge motivator for enabling data governance in organizations. Data governance can support regulatory compliance in many ways. For example, incorporating policy development and policy management into an enterprise data governance program can be very beneficial and support enterprise compliance. Policies such as data and user classification, data access, and third-party data sharing, to name a few, are vital for various regulations. Many of these policies and supporting standards and procedures may exist in an organization. Today, data governance can provide a support structure to ensure that gaps are filled, accountabilities are defined, processes to monitor adherence are defined and followed, and policies, standards, and procedures are managed and maintained on an ongoing basis. Data governance can help bring focus to the people, process, and technology aspects of regulatory compliance and leverage capabilities that are being developed already. Robust metadata solutions can also support many regulations since they can bring to light the data sets that exist today. GDPR and CCPA are the most recent examples of the increasing need for leveraging data governance to ensure compliance. And I'll describe both of these in a little bit. Getting a handle on where data resides and who's using it is becoming more and more challenging as a result of self-service capabilities as well as the variety of data stores that may exist across an organization. And some of the capabilities that data governance enables can help support these needs. At a high level, GDPR, which is focused on any organizations that could store information about European Union residents, requires that organizations have a much better handle on their data than they may have currently. European Union individuals may, at any time, ask for any personal information you have on them, as well as how you use the data and any third parties that might ac have access to it. They can ask that you pass along their data to another organization, or that you permanently get rid of this data. With the proliferation and duplication of data in various data silos, as well as data lakes that may not be that well documented, 
this is becoming more and more challenging. Many key points of GDPR strategically align to the goals of data governance. In general, these regulations make it vital that an organization be able to identify their data footprint and classify and hold people accountable for the quality, transparency, and knowledge around their data. GDPR requires that organizations identify and provide traceability as to which classes of data are flowing through which systems, reports, and business processes. This is also a key requirement of data governance and is delivered through data lineage and impact analysis. Another piece of GDPR refers to education of policies, controls, and usage rights. These capabilities can be delivered through data governance policy management, usage matrices, and a collaborative knowledge base. Like any new regulation, GDPR can be perceived as yet another regulatory hurdle, bringing with it additional cost and overhead. However, the vast majority of the regulation is truly something that should have been common sense for a long time. For example, most organizations began to assess and implement an enterprise data management framework more than a decade ago. Although many focused initially on the technology, most organizations today now understand that the business contribution is equally, if not the more important facet to ensuring good governance and regulatory controls. As such, GDPR can be perceived as an opportunity to develop or to validate the importance of data governance and data management. Having a strong data governance capability in place will also enable organizations to react more flexibly to future regulations, which I expect will be coming. CCPA is an example of one of these future regulations. It's slated to be effective at the beginning of 2020, but many organizations who may not have been worried about GDPR because it was related to European Union will need to pay more attention to, to CCPA, which is the California Consumer Protection Act. This regulation has many simul similar requirements to GDPR, and organizations will need to ensure that they have a good handle on what personal information they have on individuals, who's looking at it, and for what purpose. They'll also need to be able to react to individual requests to provide that information or even delete it. Here's a sample use case for policy development in relation to the retention of personal information. With active data governance in place, policies can be drafted, reviewed, and approved. Metrics can be established to monitor adherence or violations, and expirations and reviews can be established to ensure that the policy remains relevant. In this example, the Data Governance Council adopts a new policy and workflow that leverages existing applications to respond to a new regulation. As a result of this approach, requirements will be identified for corresponding technology solutions to support this policy. As a consulting company, we encourage that a basic data governance program be in place when we begin any master data management implementations. It simply makes implementing master data that much easier since needed people and processes are defined and can be leveraged more readily. The organization can leverage data governance to define and enable accountability and ownership for decisions about how master data is implemented and managed to reflect business requirements. Data governance, once in place, can identify and manage many of the people and process aspects of an MDM program and identifies appropriate accountability and ownership to ensure that any master data management solution is developed and maintained based on business requirements, rules, and definitions. You can see in this slide how both data governance and master data management play a role in developing a robust and sustainable master data management capability. 
I've seen organizations develop a master data management capability, but not have the appropriate individuals defined to ensure that that roles are, or that rules are, are reviewed and that there's a process to ensure that they continue to be correct as things change and systems and applications changed in the organization. By encouraging business involvement through data governance, the master data management implementation then has the appropriate level of business engagement to ensure a shared understanding and alignment of the master data implementation, associated rules and concepts. Any issues can then be routed back to business data owners and stewards for ensuring that the right decisions are made. By leveraging data governance and appropriate stewardship, master data management has a greater long-term probability of success. Data quality management is very similar to master data management in its need for business involvement and for stewards to provide decisions and direction. This is a typical data quality management process flow. You can see the tasks that can be managed by the business and technical data stewards throughout any data quality processes. Business data stewards provide the requirements and business rules and technical data stewards can implement them through the appropriate technology. Data governance and data quality are the perfect union when it comes to ensuring you have a robust data quality management capability that results in data that the business can have confidence in. With the proliferation of huge quantities of data, attention to data throughout its life cycle is becoming more and more important. There are, many view, ver, <clears throat> excuse me, there are many versions of data lifecycle management and many diagrams similar to this one that include various phases of the life cycle. Uh, this one is somewhat summarized, but overall, it's a policy-based approach to managing the flow of data throughout its life cycle from creation to initial storage throughout its use to the time when it becomes obsolete and is archived or destroyed. There are so many aspects of data lifecycle management that relate to data governance, but I'm sure you can understand how the business needs, how the business needs to have a huge involvement in determining life cycles as well as any regulatory considerations. Consideration must be given to balance business information needs with regulatory requirements. Developing and managing the policies pertaining to data storage, data architecture, data standards, and data quality in life cycle stages one and two, create and store in this slide, as well as data classification, data access, data use, data sharing, and re data retention in life cycle stages three and four, use and archive and destroy, to name a few. There are more policies, I'm sure, that we can think of as well. All of these relate to the various stages of the data life cycle. And, and these same policies will then help support various aspects of compliance as well. As you can see, a lot of areas of data governance, when done appropriately, can overlap and be leveraged across these capabilities. Finally, let's look at overall enterprise data management and how it relates to data governance. Data is proliferating. We all see that on a day-to-day -day basis with more and more self-service analytics and self-service data management going on in organizations. Data silos are also proliferating. Governance of data at an enterprise level is becoming increasingly important. The more data your organization deals with, the more challenging it becomes to figure out ownership, control, and management of any given bit of data. An enterprise-wide approach with intelligent data governance that includes people, process, and supporting technology can facilitate the approach. One of my favorite reasons for data governance is written at the top of this slide. Having data is good, but realizing value from data is great. 
data lakes <clears throat> are a viable solution to store massive amounts of data cost effectively. They're becoming more and more popular as the uh, volumes of data increase that organizations want to have available and leverage. Data lakes can have massive scale and tremendous flexibility. They can accommodate vast amounts of structured and unstructured data, and getting data into a lake is simple. These very attributes, however, contribute to making it easy to lose track of what's in the lake. In our rush to aggregate data somewhere, our lakes often serve as a dumping ground without context. In 2014, Gartner warned that data lakes without the right level of governance would be nothing more than disconnected data pools. A data lake requires a set of processes and policies around how data is collected, defined, and secured. Without this kind of framework, it's impossible to know what data is in the lake, where it came from, who owns it, and then its overall value to business users. In our rush to aggregate data somewhere, our lake often becomes a place where we dump our data for the moment with the best intention to put it in its proper context later. As you can see, data governance can play a huge role in empowering data users to find, understand, and leverage data accordingly. To summarize, data governance enhances business engagement, shared understanding, and focus on alignment, bringing an ever increasingly disconnected data environment together and providing data value optimization across many enterprise data management initiatives, one component at a time. The interesting concept here is, as you begin with data governance to support one of these capabilities, many of these aspects can be then leveraged for additional capabilities in your enterprise data management strategic roadmap, as long as you begin with the broader scope in mind. So start with data governance. It's the start of something wonderful. So one more slide that I'd like to share quickly. We do have a great framework for data governance, not just to do an assessment and walk away, but to work with you hand in hand to organize, implement, and build it in such a way that it can morph and scale into something that becomes an essential part of your organization. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Allison. Great, thank you so much, Nancy. That was a great informative presentation. And we did have a couple questions come through, so let's get to those. Uh, the first one is, when establishing and implementing data governance, do you start in one specific business area or go for kind of a big bang approach? Oh, I absolutely love that question. Um, there are so many ways that data governance can be started uh, and, and we've had successful uh, implementations uh, by uh, leveraging different strategies. One is, uh, if, if it's a very large organization, uh, developing a data governance capability in a particular part of the organization can, can work. Um, another approach is to um, link to a large initiative. Uh, we've done uh, implementations of data governance focused around the development of a data uh, platform uh, so that as you have the need to get uh, business involvement, and you need to have people involved in identifying requirements and defining uh, the information that's needed. Uh, if you develop your data governance program to support an initiative such as that, uh, it enables a, a great jumpstart to the program. Um, another approach is to create a data governance um, program across the organization, uh, one uh, uh, data domain at a time. So for instance, if you are a healthcare organization and there are challenges with the, the quality of provider data, or if you are a, um, 
a bank and there's financial information that uh, people just don't have the right access to, they don't know where it resides or what it means. There are a lot of, of opportunities to identify a particular domain of data and start with that as well. So, so there are a lot of different options for beginning a data governance program. Uh, and a, a way or an approach that I've found to be the most successful though is to ensure linkage to something that has funding and that has a recognized need for uh, some aspect of data governance. Great, thank you so much, that was a great answer. Our uh, second <laughs> question is, what framework do you leverage to assess data management and data governance maturity? Oh, okay, well actually, <laughs> we, we've developed um, a data governance maturity model ourselves that leverages five focus areas. Um, the, the way that it's, it's implemented is by leveraging a survey as well as, as interviews and pulling that information together to understand things like uh, if there are existing aspects of data governance in an organization, uh, is there structure, is there an organization, is there knowledge around that particular um, data governance implementation, um, how, how far have they gotten with having a charter or a mission around it, um, are there the level of the capabilities, um, and also in looking at things like um, the culture of the organization. Is there a culture of leveraging data to make decisions? Um, that's a key part of the maturity of, of, of an organization when it comes to data governance as well. Um, this particular maturity model is something that we've provided to organizations, uh, done the initial assessment, and then provided ongoing uh, capability to redo that, that particular maturity assessment on a, a biannual or an annual basis, obviously with the goal of increasing the maturity of, of your governance in your organization over the course of time. All right, thank you, Nancy. One more here. Um, if your company is affected by both GDPR and CCPA, will the same data governance approach work to ensure you're compliant with both? For the most part, yes. Uh, GDPR is a little bit uh, more, uh, has a little bit more uh, requirements associated with it. Um, and CCPA uh, are slightly different, but from a, from a data privacy perspective and the types of things that you would need to do to inventory where personal, inf personal information resides, who uses it, um, how is it stored, uh, can you identify all of the information for, um, for an individual uh, so that you would be able to respond to uh, individual requests? Um, all of those things are consistent across both of those regulations. So uh, we, we've got a defined approach on, on how to um, uh, respond to these as far as inventorying, assessing risk and defining um, what areas need to be addressed in order to comply with GDPR and or CCPA. Um, so I, I guess overall in the end, the, the, the similarities are enough to, uh, to leverage you know, a single data governance approach for the most part. Okay, thank you so much. And so that was it for questions. Um, could you go to the next slide, Nancy? Of course. Thank there you. There you go. All right. So uh, our next webinar is going to be Thursday, November 8th, and data strategy, the what, the why, and the how. This will be with our own Solomon Williams. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for coming. We'll let everybody go a little bit early this time. And Nancy, thank you so much for this presentation. If any of you do want to get in touch with Nancy and discuss this further, her contact information is here. We did record this session, so I will put this up on our website. And as soon as that is finished, everyone will get a link to the recording. 
so you can share that with your networks or view it again if you would like to. So that about does it for today. Again, thank you, Nancy. This was fantastic. And thank you to everyone that joined today. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.